There are three pillars here at Studio. It's alive, devoted, and curious. In this video, we're gonna dive into the word curious. To be honest with you, this one catches people off guard the most. They're like, what, why, why do they, spiritual community, have the word curious in their language, in their vocabulary? And I love how this word has this response of curiosity, and it's actually the word curious. I wanna to read to you a statement that we have that helps to define what we mean by this word curious. We are a people who remain curious about the depth, the wonder, the mystery of who our Creator God is. We are created in the image of God, therefore our ability to create is directly connected to our existence. We offer the raw and divine material of our lives to create and cultivate something beautiful. We remain curious with culture as it offers us a glimpse into the soul of humanity. You see, Jesus understood culture and he lived wholeheartedly and was able to effectively create a different culture which touched all of humanity. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, it reads this, He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. It's one of my favorite verses. And the line I want to focus on is he had put eternity in their hearts. One thing we know about humans and what makes us unique in all of creation is we have this existential longing to know why we're alive, why we exist, and what was I created to do, and what is my, what is my future. There's something so deep inside of us that wants to know, longs to know what that is and why we're alive. When you look at creation, you see birds flying in the air and, and the birds are not flying going, why am I flying right now? What, what are these things sticking off of my body and called wings? Like they're not asking the deep existential questions. Uh, a dog chases a ball and a ball and the dog's not thinking, this is why I was born. I was born to chase a ball in the yard. You don't see giraffes walking on the plains of Africa asking the question, why do I have this abnormally long neck? And why do I have a pattern on my hide, on my body? You see, we're the only species in all of creation that has this existential longing to know why we exist. And I believe that when we begin to embrace this reality, that we as humans are unique, and we are the one creation that God created, and it's the one he said, I delight in this, and it is really, really good. We begin to realize that we are wired to wonder. We are, we are designed to actually want to know and to long to know. And we begin to embrace it, then we have the ability to step outside of the parameters of our reality, to step outside and go beyond the edges of what we actually know. I would also venture to say that when you stop being curious, you stop growing. You stop expanding. You, you kind of stay who you are for the remainder of your life. So this very thing inside of us of being curious is actually something that's very existential, but it's also integral for us as humans to continue to grow and expand and learn. Our heart is that studio would be a place that we would be a people that would remain curious, that we would always want to learn and grow and expand, that we wouldn't we wouldn't settle for what we currently know, but that we'd always be expanding and growing and that we'd want to know the depths and the mystery of who our God is. And one of the dynamics that we, that we look at historically and even in today's time, you, you, speak, you see spiritual communities, uh, they, they want to arrive at a destination. They want to solve the equation of life and say, this is it, this is the final destination. And, and the way that we approach it here at Studio is that we're stepping into new dimensions of who God is. And we're stepping into new dimensions of who we are. And that's one of the things here that we always want to keep this thing in us that we're always curious. In fact, uh, for a while there, when you, when you stepped into our space where we meet on Sunday, we had a sign on the ground that said, stay curious. And the whole idea was that every time we get together, let's just stay curious. And sometimes when I am about to do something or I'm getting ready to speak or I'm getting ready to do something that I would say, okay, this is, requires all of me, I remind myself, stay curious. So as we talk about this, I want you to understand that this word is really deeply integral to who we are. 
And that when we, when we embrace the idea that we're on a journey of our faith in God instead of arriving at a destination in our faith. And here at Studio, we are working really hard to create an environment where we don't just arrive. We don't just, we're not seeking to get some place and go, we made it, we've solved it, this is it. We understand that you get to places of great understanding, great revelation, experiences with God. But for me, those are always an invitation to go even farther and deeper. So the word curiosity is a really deeply important word to us. And in this word curiosity, it's also heard that we begin to learn that because we have this existential longing, we also learn that we are actually designed to create. And I want to draw your attention to a verse in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. It says this, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created a male and female. He created them. You see, our ability to create is directly connected to our existence. As humans, one of the most dynamic aspects of us is this simply this ability to actually create something, to take, to take the material, to take anything in our life and create. When you look at the world and everything that be created, at God's creation, but ever since he created humans, humans have been creating ever since. So our creator God who put his image in us and we are in his image, it's out of that that we have this thing in us that it, it's nearly impossible to not create. So the topic of creativity and the ability to create is a topic that is really important to us here at Studio. And we essentially believe that every human has the ability to create. So the question for me isn't if you're creative. The, quest, the question that we like to pose is, what is it that you're going to create? And I know for some, they hear the word creativity and creative and think, well, that's not me. I'm not an artist or I'm not a musician or I, I don't write music or poetry or sculpture and pottery. And, and I, love the, I love those dimensions of creativity. But in this video, I want to help expand your perspective and your own view of creativity. I, I believe creativity actually comes from who you are. Now, some people may specialize or be better, if you will, or have the ability to create in these different spheres that I mentioned. But I want to propose to you, it's, you might not create in that dimension, but you create in other dimensions. Some of the most creative people that I know are actually, they're not necessarily great with painting or art or music, but they are super creative and brilliant with starting businesses. In fact, I share this all the time for parents. Uh, my, my wife and I, we've raised two daughters. And all I know that being a parent, you have to learn how to be creative. You have to learn how to be creative with how to raise your children. And, and one of the dynamics in being a parent is you found a way to parent your child. You're like, oh, I found it. This is working. We're all, it's working. It's working well. And then the next morning you wake up, it no longer works again. You thought you figured it out. You found a pattern, a rhythm, a cadence to parenting. You, you feel connected to your child. And then the next day, None of that's working anymore. Guess what you have to tap into? You have to tap into this ability to create, to explore, to be curious, if you will, to step into a space to create new patterns, new rhythms, and new cadences. So I want to expand your perspective of creativity without diminishing art and music and fashion. So I want to just pose the question, it's not a question if you're creative. The question I want you to ask yourself is this, what is it? that I use my creativity in? Is it in this dimension, this dimension, or this dimension? So I wanna challenge you to expand your, your idea of what that word means and what we mean by we, when we say creativity or to create. I think some of the, the greatest art ranges from everything from Michelangelo's David, which we, we got to see a number of years ago. It's one of the most spectacular art pieces, masterpieces I have ever experienced in person. And I think that's some of the best art in the world. And then I believe some of the best art I've ever seen is somebody over here that they had a tragedy in their life or they had a really bad upbringing, uh, just the horrible scenario, the kind of scenario that we might say, what a nightmare childhood. And seeing that person take the, mat the material of their lives, the, the rawness of what the deck of cards they've been dealt, and they're able to, by decisions they make, about taking the material of their experiences and their lives 
and over time begin to create one of the greatest pieces of art and masterpieces is someone's life is so vastly different than what their background was going to determine for them. I believe that's some of the greatest art. So creativity for me is not just creating something with our hands, as, as important as that is. It's also the ability to actually create something out of nothing with your own internal world of who you are as a human. I also believe that Creativity is, is something that God is so interested in. And we know he created the heavens and the earth, but he actually wants humans to create things that is in his heart. And I love creativity because we have to create things that are in our heart, but we also get to partner with him and to create things that are in his heart. There's a really beautiful story in Exodus chapter 31, and there's this moment where God said, I want to build a place for me so I can dwell amongst my people. It's in Exodus 31, in verse 1, God tells Moses, I found somebody. His name is Bezalel. I'm going to put my spirit in him and all manner of workmanship and wisdom and intelligence. And what's fascinating, this is the first person in all of Scripture, in all of humanity, where God puts his spirit in. And it comes in the form of creating something, of taking something and making it beautiful. And Bezalel, what he ended up doing over the course of the next about eight or nine chapters in this book of Exodus, is he creates a place that God could dwell in, that God cared about. It was one of the most spectacular creation in the ancient days. And at the end of this, Moses walks into this place that he built with wood, with gold, with metal, all kinds of material. And Moses says that this is exactly how God wanted it. So I believe our creativity is not just for our own expression. It's actually how God uses us to create things that he wants created. So I want to keep taking this word creativity. I, I also believe creativity, I believe beauty can save the world. There's a story in Zechariah chapter 1, verses 18 through 21, and I would encourage you to read it. But there's an amazing story where Zechariah is having this vision, and he is talking to this angel. And this angel shows him this vision, and he sees four craftsmen, and then he sees the stronghold of the enemy. And what the stronghold of the enemy were doing is they were, they were oppressing and causing depression on a group of people. And Zechariah could see the effect of darkness and evil on a group of people. And then he looked over and saw four craftsmen. And the angel said, I am using these four craftsmen to terrorize the enemy, to terrorize the stronghold. What I have found so fascinating is that it doesn't say four warriors or four military commanders. It says craftsmen. So I want to propose to you that beauty can save the world. We know it in so many different fields, but I want to draw your attention to this specific passage, that God decided to use four craftsmen which if you look at the word craftsman in scripture, it was usually meant this, someone that was good with their hands and good at art and good at creating things. And it was here that four craftsmen, I believe personally, they didn't wield swords or blow trumpets, they simply created out of their own existence. And in doing that, it demolished the stronghold that were oppressing the people. And by the end of this story, the heads of the nation were lifted up because of what the craftsmen did. So I actually believe beauty can save the world. The second word underneath curious that we want to focus on is culture. We, we have a real deep passion to understand culture. We have a deep passion to create a culture in studio, but we also have a, something in us that wants to understand the culture and society that we live in. I believe culture, the essence of culture, is really a revelation of what's going on in the human soul. Like if you come into my home and you experience how my wife and I do life and you experience our house and how our family interacts, that's what we call culture. It's, it's the essence of who we are. You're going to experience that. Why? Because that is coming out of who we are as humans. So when you look at humanity as a whole or a culture of a nation or a city or a people group, it is a reflection of what's going on deep in their soul. So when I look at culture today and the society that we live in, for me, it's a glimpse collectively into the human soul. Now you might ask, why is that a big deal? Why do you guys care about that? Because it's so dark, it's so evil, it's so chaotic and confusing. And I would say that is true, but there's also lots of other dynamics that are taking place. And what we see in the life of Jesus, we see Jesus actually offered another culture in the midst of a global or human culture. 
But Jesus didn't dismiss the culture, he actually found ways into it. And this is where I want us at Studio, the, one of the values that we have here, that we wouldn't just observe culture, that we wouldn't just criticize it and judge it, which I'm not a huge fan of, but we'd actually observe it for the sake of understanding. We actually have a responsibility to reach and touch humanity. We see this in the life of Jesus. We see him, he carried a deep mission to touch humans, and we see him touching all kinds of people. He didn't specialize in one people group. He didn't specialize in, the, in the, only the poor. He was actually able interacting with the richest, most elite of society to the most poor and impoverished of society. Everyone from the left politically and everyone to the right politically and everyone, every social spectrum, every education spectrum, any human spectrum that existed in that time, Jesus was able to interface and engage in and out of culture. One moment, he's raising someone from the dead. The next moment, he's talking to this, one of the smartest religious leaders of the day all night long, whose name was Nicodemus. Then the next moment, he's feeding 5,000 people. The next moment, he's walking on water. The next moment, he's, he's helping to save a woman's life who had committed adultery from being stoned. So we see Jesus interacting with culture. So the word culture is important to us because we want to create a beautiful, healthy culture and we want to understand the culture that Jesus created and offer it to humanity and invite people into it. But we also want to understand the culture we live in so we can carry the deep mission of Jesus in our hearts and to have that responsibility, to feel a responsibility for humanity. So as you can see, the word curious is really important to us and we have two culture words underneath that word curious. It's create and culture. So as we wrap up this video, I just want to say thanks, first of all, for watching this. And the goal is to help you understand what we're passionate about and what we actually want to help create an environment that helps us to become people that create beauty out of our lives. And we're also are people that want to create a culture and to actually impact and touch humanity. So I want to challenge you as you move forward that you would begin to explore these things with us. And we want to invite you to come onto a journey to create the future.